All right, so I'm currently chilling in a tree. I'm at Lake Ellery, and I'm about 40 feet up in the air. Um, but this has been, since I was a kid, one of my favorite trees to climb. And this has been one of my favorite lakes to fish at my whole life. So today I'm gonna be doing a catch, clean, and cook video for you. Hope you enjoy. Ernie's Tackle Shop. So this is where we always go every time uh, before you go fishing. You gotta get your bait, get your night crawlers, and all that stuff. So this is the go-to spot. Take care of Jeremy. He needs a couple hugs. For the love of God, please go away. Yeah, give him a couple hugs. Give him a couple hugs. Make sure he doesn't have any mind stones. So, they're getting some fish. So, Sarah, Sarah, Kyle, my mom and dad are getting fishing licenses. I already have one since I fish year round. Um, but I'm also saying maybe I'll grab a hat. Usually I'm grabbing a hat every year because you gotta protect yourself from the sun. So this is how a pole, fishing pole is set up. You gotta wait, then you gotta swivel, and then at the this end of the swivel, leader. you tie a leader, which is yeah. about a foot and a half, two feet long, which has the actual hook on the end of it. So the concept with this is when you cast this out into the water, the weight is gonna sink your bait all the way down to the bottom of the lake, but you need your bait to float because if it's not floating, it's just gonna be sitting on the bottom next to all this algae and all these plants that are growing down there. So the fish are gonna just swim by without ever seeing it. So that's why we gotta, when we, when we bait our night crawlers, you actually gotta pump some air into them so that they float about a foot and a half, two feet off the bottom of the lake so that they're just sitting right above all that algae, all those plants. So when the fish swim by, they're just seeing seeing a perfectly good looking worm just floating there and then they go for the kill. So now I'm gonna teach you how to make the irresistible bait. We got browns, night crawlers. Oops, these are the big ones. I don't want those small ones. All right, let's dig through here. Let's find a good one. Ooh, that's a good one right here. Okay. So first things first, this is really gruesome by the way. Super, super sucky to be an uh, earthworm, but uh, it is what it is. So first things first, cut it in half. I always prefer using this side, this side with the band on it. And then we go down and what you wanna do is you wanna hide the hook. You don't want the fish to see any hook. So you gotta hide the hook inside the worm. So you gotta thread it through the actual hole, the body of the worm, and then pop it out here. So now the entire hook is covered, and all you see is the very end of the hook sticking out right there. So it's really low key. Now, what we gotta do is we got to, it's pretty messed up, but this is just kind of what you gotta do. You gotta get a syringe, and you gotta inject air into the bottom of this night crawler so poke it so it gets a little bit squished down there here we go and you slowly inject air into it so it's nice and juicy looking wow Whew. now that is a fat night crawler and that's gonna catch a fish so according to sarah fish nibbles feel kind of like baby kicks baby kicks same thing cool all right now it's time to get this boy out here worm floating that is juicy oh uh, yeah okay so the concept with the cast you get the weight pretty close to the end of the pole and then you go ahead and put your finger on the finger on the line down here and you flip this thing which is called the bail so this is what allows the line to just start running like crazy without it being stopped so then just cock it back and then let go at the same time that I bring it forward 
My dad caught my dad caught a little fish. And I caught a little grasshopper. This is gonna be my bait that I'm about to use. Hey, Sarah's on the board too. These are all little tiny babies this year. But it still counts, bud. Congrats. You on the board. Kyle, we got a fish on. Is it off? Oh, you thought it was? Growing pains. Brutal. Hey, you gonna get a fish soon. Kyle on the scoreboard with his first catch of the day. Ah, good work, mate. <laughs> yeah, he really did. Let me see. Hold up. Dang, he's going for. His... Oh, actually, it is deep. Oh, it is? It's deep. Yeah, the worm was just hanging out. Oh, all right. One of the most important thing about fishing, since you're gonna be out here all day, anyways, is you gotta have great food. So I just spent the last, honestly, probably what, 20 minutes, bud? Yeah. 20 minutes setting this up, but we got a bagel with cream cheese, lox, red onions, avocado, tomato, cucumbers, sour cream, or cream cheese, and a bunch of lox. We got mango, jalapeno kettle chips, a chocolate chip cookie from Shots, and a roast beef sandwich. And Buster, you want a chip? Okay, you can have a chip, buddy. There you go, bud. First bite of this boy. <laughs> I couldn't even get to all of it. Still fire though. Kyle, you wanna grab it? Or Sarah? How do I do it? This is, it's just a video, so I'll just take a screenshot of it. Yay! <laughs> is there a fish? Oh yeah, hey, mom, you out here on the scoreboard as well. Oh yeah, it's a giant. Let's see, is it lip? No, that buddy swallowed that boy. Sorry, dude. Okay, we gotta pet it. All right, mama. High five. Okay, so it might be kind of hard to tell, but I hooked him right at the base of his wing. So he's actually still totally alive and unharmed. But he can't fly away, which is the beauty of it. Let's see what we can catch. I think I might have a fish on. Let's see. Oh yeah, I got a little fight. Oh, got a little fight. Oh, Sarah's bringing in a fish. All right, so I just caught another little rainbow trout. Um, but the good thing about this one is he was just lipped. Wow, look. I didn't even get him from his mouth. I got him literally under his chin. What? That is, that's rare. He didn't even bite it. Got it under his, under his chin, not even in his mouth. So anyways, the good thing is because he was lipped, it's easy to let him go and he won't have any like internal bleeding or anything like that. So, all right, little buddy. Take off. Come on. Come on. He's a little in shock. Let's get some water through his gills. There we go. Wake him up. All right, let's go. There he goes. There he goes. Oh, this is a little bit bigger. Yeah? Yeah, this might be a keeper. Hey, <laughs> the first keeper? I don't know, nine, nine and ten inches, nine. Let's see. Yeah, man, that's a keeper. That that that's. There we go. There's our first, <laughs> our first decent sized trout. All right. So at the end of the day, we ended up with seven little fish, and these honestly are way smaller than the normal types of fish we would keep. Um, the only reason we kept a lot of these is because they ended up biting the hooks really deep like in their stomachs or in their guts. So like when we were fighting them or bring, fighting them, bring them into the shore, not really fighting because they're so small. Um, you could just tell that they weren't gonna survive. So there's no point in just throwing a dead fish back out there. We might as well, you know, if it's gonna die, we might as well clean it, eat it, appreciate it, and uh, not let it die in vain. So 
So we got seven fish we're gonna be taking home, cooking, cleaning, and we'll see you there. Let's go clean some fish, dude. <laughs> you ready? All right. Buster knows the way. Oh yeah, mark your territory, kid. There you go. This is where we've been cleaning fish forever. Many years. Many years, literally since, since we were born, right? I don't think we've ever missed a year. They've been doing this since, since mom was a kid. Okay, so here is today's <laughs> little tiny haul. It's a bunch of baby fish, and like, like we were mentioning earlier, these are all way too small. Normally we would have let all these go, but these were all fish that got hooked kind of deep. Like they swallowed the hook, and basically they weren't gonna make it. But this is going to be an assembly line. This is how we always do it. First person cuts, second person guts, and third person bleeds out, gets the blood. So just a warning, this is gonna be a little bit gruesome. Actually, not a little bit, it's gonna be kind of... You're gonna see how, how we clean a fish. All right, so first things first. So you start from the butthole, which is right there. You can actually see it. And you cut straight up. You don't want to cut too deep because you, you don't want to mess up the, the other flesh of the, of the fish. Cut, cut all the way up to here. Then under the jawline, you slice right through there. Slit. Next step. You take it by the slice, top nice. of the mouth. Okay. And then you pull. And this is where it this is kind gets kind of gnarly. You get all this. Guts out. All the guts come out. Sometimes, sometimes if it's like a mama fish, there'll be a bunch of fish eggs and stuff attached to it, but we toss that there. Last step, we turn the water on. Show, show them what it looks like first. So there's a bunch of blood going all the way down the spine of a fish. So you gotta clean that. Otherwise you're just gonna be getting a bunch of blood when you, when you cook it and eat it, which is gonna be a little bit gnarly. So you scrape it out with a spoon, you can use your finger, water, any of the above work. And that is basically how you clean a fish. So now we just gotta get through the rest of these six and we'll be on our way. All right, and there you have it. These are seven clean fish and these are going to be ready to go for cooking tomorrow. What were you doing across the street by yourself? Dude, come on. It's okay, it's okay. Come on, come on. Just don't do that again, alright, bud? Alright, bud. <laughs> He's, he shows all of his emotions. He's so cute. That kind of boy was here already. The last wipe off. Leave our station clean. Cleaner than we found it. Oh, yeah, don't, don't steal the cutting kind of board. <laughs> All right, thanks, bud. Thanks, Pop. We are headed back to the crib. Okay, and when I said see you guys back at the crib, I actually thought we were gonna be talking about Gull Lake Lodge, um, but I'm actually back in my family's house in LA right now, which is currently being remodeled. Uh, we ended up doing something di different for dinner that night, and we didn't end up cooking fish while we were up there. So we are back in LA, and I'm gonna show you how we, uh, how we cook these trout. All right, and when it comes to trout, me and my family always use B Loves Life Garlic Smackalicious Sauce. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm saving this for a different episode, um, but this is gonna be good. Shout out B Loves. I'm excited to try your new sauce. And uh, realistically though, how we always do the trout in our family is we get the trout like so. We dip them on both sides in like the potato, potato flakes like dry, dried potato flakes, but we don't have that right now. So we're gonna go ahead and use panko breadcrumbs. So first things first, we're gonna throw shoot a little salt on both sides of the trout. Dip both sides of the fish in the panko breadcrumbs. And normally, honestly, the potato flakes work better than this panko um, because they're finer, they're finer flakes, but gotta work with what we got. So this will still be, this will still be really good. Like a thin layer of oil on there. You can use like vegetable oil, canola oil. Start on medium heat now. There we go. And I'm gonna 
flip this over to the other side. Ooh. Ooh. And these are looking good and done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them off. Okay, so we've got our trout cooked. It actually looks pretty nice with the panko. Um, I do prefer, I think we all prefer doing it with the potato flakes. It usually works out a little bit better. But um, this still turned out pretty good. So there's a specific way to debone trout that me and my family do. I'm not sure if there's other ways. But what we do is we grab the tail first. And then we start by pulling. It's kind of hard with this in the way. So we start by pulling down this meat. I mean, you can kind of see that these bones just start coming off all these ribs. There's a top layer of ribs and a bottom layer of ribs. And those bottom layers, those are some, that's a serious rib cage. So we just cleaned that, deboned it perfectly, uh, almost perfectly. Let's get it. We'll call that perfectly. And that is just perfect. Now we have successfully deboned this trout. And we have this little carcass here, the skeleton. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and toss that in the trash. Um, you're probably wondering, well, what do you eat it with? So what we always would eat it with, well, of course, like rice salad or whatever you want, but to actually put on the fish, we put Italian dressing, wishbone Italian dressing, combined with regular soy sauce. So you might think that that sounds like a weird combo, but surprisingly, it's actually so good. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this big sauce guy. So I'm always generous with it. There we go. And then hit that with some soy sauce. And I kind of just let the sauces run off onto the plate. Um, I'm gonna pull this fish off. Um, dad, you wanna come try this? All right, so we got me and my dad here. We're going to go ahead and dive on in. You want to grab that? I'll, I'll grab that one out Yeah. I'll grab this side. Actually, I'll take this bite right here. So, Italian dressing and soy sauce. I'm just getting everything. That's mm -hmm. good, huh? Good. Wow. Yeah, that is good. So, I know it sounds like a funky combo. Just Italian dressing and soy sauce. But Dad's already back in for another bite. It's very good. Yeah, yeah right. And, and this trout has a pink flesh on it. That's yeah, cool. that's 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 a good point. So this this trout's flesh is a little bit pink, almost orangey like salmon. A lot of times when you catch a trout, it's going to be wider flesh. So this is kind of a kind of a cool fish that we caught. But overall, that is that's that. That is a catch, clean, and cook of rainbow trout. We took you from June Lake. Uh, the city of June Lake, we started at Lake Ellery. We brought you back to LA. All right, Dad, anything you want to say to our friends over here on YouTube? Go catch some trout. Go catch some trout. Uh, the final words from the man. And you know, for me, just uh, if you made it to the end of the video or if you've been watching and supporting my content, I really appreciate it. I just want to thank you seriously um, for hanging out. You know, I put a lot into these videos because I really want to be able to share things that I love and family traditions and things that I feel like have brought so much joy and happiness into my life and I want to be able to share that with all of you. So, you know, if you've actually watched and enjoyed this, th that's the goal for me, you know? So thank you, I love you guys. Stay tuned for the next video and we'll see you soon. All right, peace.